Here we're going to look at Vieta's famous formula for pi. And that says that pi can be expressed as the infinite product 2 times 2 over square root of 2 times 2 over square root of 2 plus square root of 2 times 2 over the square root of 2 plus the square root of 2 plus the square root of 2 and so on and so forth. Where as we move in this direction, we increase the nesting of our square roots of 2. So notice in this first one, we have a single 2 under a square root. Here we've got two twos. We've got a square root nested inside of a square root. Here we've got a square root inside of a square root inside of a square root, and then so on and so forth. And we're going to use two nice results in order to prove this. And one involves the exact value of cosine pi over 2 to the n, where n is bigger than or equal to 2. And in fact, that's equal to this kind of nested sum of square roots of 2. So the square root of 2 plus the square root of plus the square root of 2 and so on and so forth, where we have n minus 1 total square roots, and that's all over 2. Then the next thing that we use is Euler's expansion of sine x over x in terms of a product of cosines. So that's equal to cosine x over 2 times cosine of x over 4 times cosine of x over 8, and then so on and so forth. Okay. So let's prove this one first one first, and we're going to do that with induction, which means we need a base case. Since this is starting to work when n is equal to 2, we'll take n equal 2 to be our base case. But that's just a trivial calculation because we have cosine of pi over 4, which is the cosine of pi over 2 to the 2, is equal to the square root of 2 over 2. That's a well-known value for the cosine function. And notice we have a single square root here, so that goes along with this formula. Okay. So now we'll make an induction hypothesis. So that means we need to suppose for some k bigger than or equal to 2, we have, well, this holds. So we have the cosine of pi over 2 to the k is equal to the square root of 2 plus the square root of 2, so on and so forth, plus the square root of 2, where we have k minus 1 total um, inclusions of the square root of 2 over 2. And now we'll look at the next step. So let's say now we'll consider the cosine of pi over 2 to the k plus 1, but that's equal to the cosine of 1 half times pi over 2 to the k. And we can use the half angle formula for the cosine. And that tells us that this is equal to the square root of 2 plus, let's see, 2 times the cosine of pi over 2 to the k all over 2. So like I said, that is the half angle formula for cosine. So if you want to look at that more generally, if we replace this with theta, then we would replace this over here with theta. And that's how it would maybe appear in a textbook. But now let's notice if we take our induction hypothesis and include that into this expression for this cosine, then we have exactly what we need to finish off our induction step, which means we've proven this first result. And now we're ready to move on to this second result, which is this product expansion of sine of x over x. So this may seem like a little bit of a cheat, but we're going to use a different infinite product expansion of sine of x over x and cosine in order to prove this nicely. But these are well-known expansions. So let's maybe write that under the heading, recall. So first of all, let's recall that sine of x over x can be rewritten as the infinite product as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 minus x squared over pi squared times n squared. So that's motivated by the fact that the roots of sine of x over x are exactly plus or minus like multiples of pi. So we've got plus minus pi, plus minus 2 pi, plus minus 3 pi, but then when you multiply those together, you get this difference of squares type thing like this. So I think we've derived something like this on the channel before, although this, like I said, is well known. Then we're going to use another one, which is also fairly standard, and that is the cosine of theta over 2. 
So that should have roots at odd integer multiples of pi, not even integer multiples of pi because we get cosine is equal to plus minus one there. But that means we can expand this as the product as k goes from one to infinity of one minus theta squared over, let's see, pi squared times two k minus one squared. Again, that's because this is zero when theta is an odd multiple of pi, and that's encoded in this like factorization by the roots. Okay, so now that we've got this taken care of, we can just start with this expansion and work towards this kind of product of expansions down here. Okay, so let's get to it. So we've got sine x over x is equal to the product as n goes from one to infinity of one minus x squared over pi squared times n squared. But now I'm gonna take this product which is happening over all natural numbers and split it into a product based around how many twos I can factor out. So if n is odd, I can't factor any twos out. If n is just a multiple of two, but not a multiple of four, I can factor a single two out and so on and so forth. So that means I can rewrite this like the product as k goes from one up to infinity of one minus x squared over pi squared 2k minus one squared. So that would be the case when n is odd. And then that's going to be multiplied by the product as k goes from 1 up to infinity of 1 minus x squared over 2 squared pi squared 2k minus 1 squared. So that would be the case when n is even but not a multiple of 4. So in other words, it's just a multiple of two. And then maybe we'll put one more term from this product in just for good measure. The next term would be the product as k goes from one to infinity of one minus x squared over two to the four times pi squared times two k minus one squared, dot, dot, dot. So again, let's write what's going on here. So here, this is the case when n is odd. Any, in other words, you can't divide out any multiples of two. This is the case when n is even, but it's only divisible by two one time. So we can write that as n is totally divisible by two. So this is the notation that says n is divisible by two, but n is not divisible by four. And then here, this is for the case when four totally divides into n. So that means n is divisible by four, but not by any other larger power of two, and then so on and so forth. So that's just regrouping all of these natural numbers by how many twos can factor out. But now at this stage, we can apply this cosine formula. In this first place, it's the cosine formula where theta is just equal to x. In this second case, it's the cosine formula when theta is equal to x over two. In this third case, it's when theta is equal to x over four. And then, well, like I said, that's an infinite product, so that keeps going on. And that actually produces exactly what we need over here. We have cosine of x over two times cosine of x over four times cosine of x over eight, and so on and so forth. We've got our infinite product. Okay, so now let's bring maybe this result to the top and then we can evaluate it at a certain place and have our solution. So we just got done finished deriving this the kind of Euler's expansion of sine of x over x in terms of cosines. Now we're ready to finish this thing off. So we will evaluate both sides at x equals pi over two and see what happens. So let's see. If x is equal to pi over two, then sine of x is sine of pi over two, which is one. So we have one over pi over two. So that gives us two over pi. And then let's see what we have on the other side of the equation. So we're gonna have cosine of pi over four because it's pi over two over two. So cosine of pi over four is the square root of two over two. And then next we'll have the cosine of pi over eight. But now we can apply this first 
tool that we proved to see that that is the square root of two plus the square root of two over two. So like I said, that's cosine of pi over eight. And then cosine of pi over 16, which is what we get from here, will be the square root of two plus the square root of two plus the square root of two over two. And then that's gonna be an infinite product. But now all we have to do is take the reciprocal of both sides and then multiply this two from the numerator to the denominator and we have it exactly. Maybe we could make that a little bit clearer by taking this two, making it into a one and dividing the other side by two. In other words, we just multiplied both sides of this equation by half. And now we can see that the reciprocal of one over pi is pi, but the reciprocal of the right-hand side is exactly this right hand side. So we have finished coming up with our identity and that's a good place to stop.